Um, one of the things that I was thinking about that I wanted everyone to say is, is don't ever allow people to suppress you, okay? Don't, don't let people shame you into what you believe in. These people don't even know me. They know nothing about me, okay? And they're acting like robots and they're walking around with their signs and they won't even talk to me. Don't even have a conversation. What I don't understand is what are they afraid of? Do you guys know what they're afraid of? They're, 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 what are they afraid being of? Being told they're wrong. What's that? Being told they're wrong. Having to be with her. Yeah. <laughs> and and all I've done is preach love from the very beginning. That's all I've done. We're no I, b I believe in true tolerance and true us. acceptance. Listen, they're us. The thing is that you guys got to do in your college campus is you have to do stuff like this. You've got to get your American flags. You've got to start doing stuff like this. You've got to start organizing. Because freedom's got to be cool again. And it's got to be cool and again. And you, you have to include people a little bit differently. Absolutely. And that's the thing that we do. We have, we have all types of people in our group. We have people who are, you know, somewhat left, somewhat right. But at the end of the day, we have people that believe in free speech. That's what built Patriot Prayer. It was free speech from the very beginning. We went into the areas you we weren't supposed to go. We went into UC Berkeley, okay? A thousand people masked up wanting to kill us. And we did that to highlight the importance of it. You see, these people are being peaceful. Amen to that. But that's just the beginning, okay? It's extremism, and it picks up more and more and more to the point where they do finally mask up, okay? In Berkeley, um, the thing I want to talk about Berkeley is that we kept going in there numerous times, and the police were standing down. Did you guys see those videos? The police are standing down. They're not doing a damn thing. And the reason why they're doing that is because the local politicians, right, they, they say that we're racist. They say that we're racist and hateful, and they drum up all that hatred, and then they have the police stand down. And so what do they do? So the police stand down, so they're hoping that they would just chase us out of town. And it worked. It worked for a while. For a lot of conservative people were afraid to be open, uh, do, do rallies in Berkeley. But instead of running from it, we decided we're going to hit it over and over and over and over again until finally they allowed the police to do their job. Now you can go into Berkeley with an American flag and you can talk about freedom, you can talk about God, and you will be protected by the police. Okay? But that's the thing though, is that would have never happened if we didn't challenge it. We got to challenge. We got to challenge the status quo in this country with everything that you do, including this campus. See, it's interesting that they're here. They're here for whatever reason that they're here for. But what it is is it exposes what's going on on this campus. Okay, people have to have an open mind and an open heart. They, you have to. You have. That's how you're going to learn and grow. Okay. And the fact that they're out here is actually a good thing because they're going to listen. Okay. Do you guys feel stifled to be a conservative on campus? It's good. It's good. What are your professors like? I've had some that don't agree with me at depends all, and I have some who will keep their opinion to themselves. They're not very political here, though, huh? Depends on the it depends on yeah. the subject. Yeah. 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 Politics teacher was very political. What do you mean? Uh, education. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you just kind of want to stand on their good side, too. You know, right. Like, you just piss your brain. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. You make your yeah. Well, I'll stand that side. I was lucky in my politics class, there's two other students who shared the same view as me, yeah. and they were brave enough to speak up against what she was saying at Good. times. Awesome. I was like, I wouldn't be able to do that then. So this is one of the things that I do, is I want to encourage people that it's okay to be you. It's okay to be you, and to stand up for what you believe in, no matter where you're at, anywhere in this country. That's the spirit that we got to bring back because we have too many people that are just, they're too afraid to be called racist or they're too afraid of this or too afraid of what people think. But at the end of the day, we just have to voice our opinion and stand up for what we believe in. This is the only way we're going to get this country back because I finally at a certain point said that the problems that I see in this country, they're my problem now. Where before my state of mind was the problem's too big. I didn't, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I had the potential to make any change at all. But the truth is, each and every single one of you here today, okay, with no exceptions, including, you, them. including, them, including them, you have the ability to change the world. It's, there's no doubt about it, okay? And when I realized that, that changed my life forever. Imagine how much that will change your actions. If you truly believe that you can change the world, especially if you walk with Jesus, that's when you're gonna start to walk in your true faith. We have, we have too many Christians who focus on just not sinning, right? Like don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, don't sin, don't do this, don't do that, and then you can go to heaven. That's not what being, that's not what following Jesus is about. It's about taking your faith in God and Jesus and applying that to the real world and going out to be a soldier for God, a soldier for Christ, and actually using that faith to change the world around you. It's so important. If you're if you're not taking courageous actions every single day, and by courageous that could be anything, right? It can be talking to someone new. It can be you guys showing up here today. It could be anything. If you're not taking courageous actions every single day, I'm telling you, God is going to be disappointed. He wants you to be courageous. 
he wants you to be outspoken. He wants you to just the fact that you guys are here today. I don't know if you guys were scared or what, but he wants us to stand up for what we believe in. Okay, we have a the way that our country is going right now. Let's talk about abortion, for example. Okay, in New York they passed that bill um, where basically you can have an abortion all the way up until um, nine months if the doctor says that it's good, it's it's beneficial to your health. Okay, it used to be your life had to be in danger. Okay, now the thing is is what we have going on in this country is complete brainwashing. The fact that anyone would find that acceptable to kill a baby, a full, like a nine month baby, right? And the mom's life is not in danger. People find that acceptable. This, this is the thing that I'm talking, telling people. We're gonna do a rally out in New York. If we don't do something about that, we don't even deserve to have this country anymore. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? We're, we're absolutely, we're murdering innocent babies and everyone's standing around like it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. This is the this is why we have to be outspoken in everything that we believe in. You have to stand up for those who don't have a voice, okay? No matter what you're doing, no matter what the day is, no matter where you're at, we have to begin to stand up and stand tall, okay? Because we're gonna lose this country. That means more babies are gonna get murdered. That means we're gonna give up more of our guns. We're gonna give up more of our liberties. The Constitution is gonna continue to be trampled all over if we don't stand up. This is an example. I don't understand. It is. When I saw, did you guys see what happened in San Jose during the Trump election? People left the Trump rally and they're getting beat up in the streets in front of the police. Do you guys remember that? What I don't understand is why there were thousands of people on the streets after that in outrage. Why don't we have thousands of people taken to the streets when we see an injustice? Because that was an injustice. I saw a kid. A skinny kid running for his life from a mob, and people were just watching. Is that where we're at in this country now? We just sleep throughout the entire day? We don't stand up for what's right? This is a big problem. And that's why I go around to these different schools because I want to, I want you guys to stop the way that you're living life, stop doing the every single day thing, and do something. Get out there and go do something. I'm telling you, if we keep sleeping, okay, this is how this is how they continue to take away our rights and our liberties because you just keep you keep sleeping. Just oh, just go to work, go to class, don't do anything unique, don't do anything special, okay? Do you guys ever get bored of living that life? The same day, same thing every day, day after day after day. It's like ground was a groundhog day, right? You're living the same life over and over and over again. I'm telling you. When you find your true calling in life, okay, this is my this is my calling. I'm living it right here, right now, with you guys. When you find that calling, okay, and you start to live life the way it's meant to be, okay, especially if you do it through your faith in Jesus, if you believe, you will experience something that you've never experienced before, and you will never go back. You will never go back when you find that. Each of us have an identity. Each of us are different and unique people. We're not all meant to do what I do. I'm not telling you to do what I do, but you have something in your life that you're missing. It's your calling. You gotta find that. Every single day you should be searching for your calling. Every single day. You gotta find out what it is because I'm telling you, I was miserable for 32 years and I didn't even know it because I'm just a normal American living my, the same thing every day, making money, whatever, living uh, according to the way that our society wants us to live. Don't speak up too much. Don't say anything controversial, right? Just go through the day. I wanted to be left alone and just kind of live my life, okay? But I was miserable because I had no purpose, right? That's the worst feeling in the world. I remember when I finally, the um, when I decided to throw my first rally, no one knew who I was. I didn't even want to speak. I didn't want to speak, okay? I was scared. No one agreed to speak at my first rally because like, who the hell is this guy? No one knew who I was, okay? So I ended up, I was, this is very important. I, I, this is, I really want, I want you guys to think about this, okay? So I was feeling discouraged. The rally was gonna start in about two weeks. I wasn't taking any sort of, um, uh, I had no speakers, I had no rally, right? And so I'm driving in my car, okay? This is something you guys have to understand. I'm driving in my car and I, I hear that voice in the back of my head, which has been driving my life, right? This voice, and I didn't realize it until I heard that voice consciously. And it was, it was, Joey, you don't have to, you can quit. You can just quit. Just quit, right? Because I, I was the type of guy where I had so many good ideas, but I never put it into action, right? 
so many good ideas never put into action i had so many weird ideas things that i always would think of and dream about but i never put it into action and when i heard that voice i realized that voice that's telling me it's i can just quit that's been running my entire life that my entire life so i pull over my i pull over in the car i got emotional i said god i said god please don't let me quit like i've always quit in my entire life that's called that's called um basically speaking the truth to God and saying, basically I had to say, I'm a quitter. I had to admit that fact. And I instantly had the idea, I said, okay, I'm just going to write my own speech and I don't care if I show up and two people show up, I'm gonna give my speech and then I'm gonna leave, okay? And so that's that's what, that moment in time in my life right there when I'm driving my car, my life could have gone in two different directions. I could have said, okay, I'm gonna quit. And I wouldn't even be here today. I wouldn't be living my passion, okay? my dream. Now what happened is I worked on my speech, worked on my speech, worked on my speech. The day came for rally, okay? Rally day. I was scared. I couldn't even sleep, okay? Before the rally started, I literally left, crossed the street to Starbucks and was considering just running, just leaving. That's how afraid I was to give a speech. That was the scariest moment in my entire life. But when I finally did the speech, okay? A couple, like within 30 seconds of me speaking, I was like, this is it. This is what God built me for, right here, right now. Now, my point is, everything in life that's worthwhile is gonna be scary, okay? Everything. Do not let fear run your life. Don't do it. Because if that's the enemy trying to stop you from living your dream, from living your life, because I wouldn't give back anything, the opportunities I've had in the last few years, simply because I took that first step, okay? The enemy was hoping that he can put enough fear in my heart that I wouldn't find out what my true calling is. So it's very important that you guys find out what you're meant to do, your talents, your qualities, okay? And your flaws, all right? Um, so, yeah, so that's that. Does anybody have any questions? I mean, I could talk for hours, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions? About what I've been doing, what we've been doing, Second Amendment stuff? Do you guys know what we've been doing with the Sanctuary Ordinance? Okay, so what we're doing, 16, the passage of 1639. Who knows about 1639? Okay, all right. Well, it's 30 pages long. I highly recommend that you read it because it is a complete attack on your constitution. And basically what they're doing is they're making it so that some politician, some lawyer, somebody, we don't know who it is, can determine whether or not you have a right to the Second Amendment or not by going through your medical records. They're going to go straight up to the veterans like they always do, and they're just going to be PTSD. So... Um, what we decided to do to push back because the people did vote for it, okay? Unfortunately, because Seattle runs this state, okay? Seattle overwhelmingly voted for it. Ironically, about 500,000 people voted um, in Seattle and we lost by 500,000 votes total, okay? It's just the irony of it. So what we decided to do, we started to look at sanctuary cities, okay? What's a sanctuary city? Do you know what a sanctuary city is? What's up? Sanctuary legal immigrants are allowed this guy. Right, so basically they're saying we're not gonna honor, we're not gonna follow this law in the city, right? Or this town. Oh, remember correctly, it is just they straight up don't allow federal officers to conduct any activity within the city. And you cannot, the, the main thing is officials cannot work with the feds or ICE for uh, illegal immigrants. So we kind of look at that and we're like, they're, they're breaking the constitution right there, but they're getting away with it. It's upheld in court several times. Do you guys know what Kate Steinle is? She's the one that got murdered in San Francisco. She got murdered by an illegal alien because of the sanctuary city. The family's trying to sue the city and they lost. They couldn't even sue the city. So we decided we're gonna take that, the sanctuary city, we're gonna go around all over the state of Washington and we're gonna to begin to pass certain ordinances depending on the county so that they respect the constitution. They say, hey, we're, we're here to follow. For example, in Battleground, what I'm pushing for is a fourth amendment ordinance where they basically, it states that the Battleground police have to have a warrant to come and take your property, which is the constitution, Yes. right? Yes. That's the main thing. And so what we want is we want Bob Ferguson and his, whoever he sends in from out of the city to come in to take the guns if they want, because we want the local battleground police, we want them to be friends to the community, not the enemy. They need to protect the constitution at a local level. So that's what we're doing. And we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow. And we've had probably, I don't know, 15 or 20 resolutions passed, but we're working on, on the ordinance. In Oregon, Rob Taylor's been doing it. He has eight, counties where they're, they're it's basically a second amendment sanctuary um county so yeah yeah as an educator i want to ask you how do you think you could want to solve um, the issue of gun violence in schools you arm arm people in schools why not because 
Well, just from my perspective, as an educator, being I work with special needs students in mm -hmm. particular. Sure. So the idea of having a gun anywhere in the school is terrifying to me. I grew up around guns, so I'm aware. I yeah. Know how to use them. That sounds like an awful idea. Have you Have you been around in classrooms very often, other than attending classes? Have you been educated at all? Been in special needs classrooms at all? Yeah. Because if you have been, I think you know it's chaos sometimes, and you're one person. But I just feel like it's just opening it up to accidents happening, which is sure. terrifying. Yeah. So, but is there another solution? I wonder. But hold on, I want to yeah. I want to turn yeah. about for a second. Totally. So here's here's the problem though. Okay. Yeah. Anything of value in this society, we protect with guns. Everything. I don't understand why there's an exception with our with our kids. I don't understand why the second you and I understand where you're coming from. But yeah, I understand yeah, yeah. the second. Let's say let's say this is normal world, right? And then all of a sudden you take one step on campus. Why all of a sudden it should change? Why all of a sudden you shouldn't have guns to protect the children? Because they're always going, they're going to gun-free zones on purpose because they know that no one will shoot back. It, it's, it's a two-tier defense too because if you have deterrent, deterrent. Uh, you know, gun-free zones are notoriously attacked because there's no threat of retaliation. They they have free reign to do what they want. Versus if you go into a place where they they know it's defended by guns, they're less likely to attack because they're less likely to achieve their goals. And you can have a, a armed security, which also has a second uh, layer of promoting interaction with law enforcement with children. We need to understand that law enforcement is a friend and an ally and a protector, and not someone they need to be afraid well, of. Well, yeah, we do walk. We do. Uh, take measures like that in our own school where we have um, every week a walkthrough where a um, police officer or a sheriff just walks through the school, hangs out with the kids to give that message, which, yeah. which I think is very important. But it, how could it be safe to have a gun, not on an officer, that feels different to me, but on a civilian in a classroom with uh, sometimes upwards of 20 kids, sometimes with special needs, sometimes with violent behaviors? How can you, how can you keep your classroom safe of like five a crazy adults? teacher? I would never have a, well, uh, well, kids, kids, kids getting a hold of a gun. Get a hold of a gun on accident. You know, things happen. From an so irresponsible person. Yeah, right. yeah. So, but a, a teacher has 20 kids to take care of and a gun. That's like a huge responsibility. I would not be willing to. What if you use a, a non lethal method, like a something that could take down a potential shooter in the classroom instead of going through them and then just going down? But also, if it's used by a student, I mean, it's not going to kill someone. Very rarely does it kill someone. Yeah. It's easier. It's easier to get, be able to have a taser like another citizen to go through the process of training as it is for. Like, well, and I, I agree. But if you take if you take the scenario of like airline air flights, you have a, an air marshal on board. He's the only flying They don't aren't the pilots. Right. They let them fly the plane. You let the teachers teach in the class. But you have your your security that. That's just what I was going to say. Nine times out of ten, they're not going to have an issue because someone's going to know that you have some security at school. To, to do something. In the one case the, they do, you have rapid response. You're already on campus. You're already there to, to act. You're just waiting 10 minutes. Yeah, that is reasonable. Here, here's the thing. No laws will, will change it, though. No laws will keep the kids safe. No. It's just a fact. I, I wish we could. Criminals yeah, don't care. Wait, what, what do you mean? There, there's no law that you can pass that's going to that's gonna solve the problem that you're talking about. Okay? No law. Because restricting, restricting more guns or whatever, that's just not going to help us. And the other thing, too, and this is very controversial, Okay, so bear with me, but okay, there's 300 murders a year from a rifle. That's good enough, hold on. Okay, I don't want to minimize that, but 300 is nothing compared to, I mean, you're more likely to get beat up with a pair of kids or guys with a pair of kids. We gotta look at the statistics because we see a school shooting, it impacts us emotionally so much, right? To the point where we think it's a huge problem, but it's not as much. black kids are dying all the time every single day but no one cares because you know, it's not on the news you see black kids dying in the ghetto in chicago all the time people dying every single day no one cares yeah and they have the strictest gun they have the strictest gun laws in the country now the same thing with mexico you take mexico you can't have guns in mexico but everyone's dying from guns everybody it's, it's a sad situation down there now they took the guns away from the people so now the cartels and the government rule over the people and the people have no way of defending themselves from the cartels so that's for me 
the kids dying is a horrible thing and it's very sad you know especially when you think about um you know the elementary kid sandy hook it's yeah. so bad what had happened it is it's just it's heartbreaking but at the end of the day we have to make sure that we don't have another hitler in this country that we don't have another uh, uh stalin that we have we keep our freedom we have to understand how many millions of people's lives are being saved every single day simply because we have rifles it's a deterrent i understand a lot of the points you made i understand that but when you say um that no law is going to keep kids safe I, I kind of get that i could i could see um some laws about um making people I don't know how it would be done, but more responsible for their weapons. Because a lot of the kids who go out and, you know, do these things, they, their parents just but it leave their weapons out and about. And, like, the school I'm in, I've been told, is higher on the list of a likelihood of a shooting happening there yeah, because of all the people and in the a community. Lot of times, the mm -hmm. parents don't know before the kids actually <laughs> act upon it. Like a lot of depression, kids hide it from their parents because they're ashamed that what of what their parents will do. Even though a lot of the parents will help them, so a lot of parents don't know that they're thinking these things or feeling these things, and they have experience with their guns. They took their kids to shooting ranges. Mental health. The yeah, mental health. They taught them everything that's right, so they have no reason to believe that they will go take the weapon and kill someone. So they have placed trust in their child. Leaving that gun Which out. I just, just like I, car, I think right? is never okay with a gun. With any kids in the house, I don't think it's ever okay to have a gun at all available to them because kids are kids. So you yeah. never know. I sure. Yeah. 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 They should lock them up. No. I, it was a couple years ago, but there was a story of a young girl trained to, I think it's trap shooting, shoot the play pigeon that's guy with a shotgun. She was. Like a medal, she got awards for doing this. A young girl got awards for doing this. Knows how to use a shotgun. Her home was invaded while her parents were not home. Two people came in and basically she shot them dead. Just up the street, another home that they had invaded. They killed the old man who was occupying. The reason that young girl is still alive is because she was trained in how to use that gun. And it was and had access to it. That's an Otherwise, point. it would be another story of <laughs> a couple people came in and did horrible things, and this young girl left home alone and vanished into the night. Interesting point. Well, I appreciate that you were talking about um, an officer rather than giving teachers guns. That's always that's always bothered me. People a, a lot of people that. have talked about leaving it in an administrative oh. office rather than carrying it around. Versus the, the young girl who protect herself and the older man not protect himself. They both had access to firearms. He chose. You may not feel comfortable with the firearms, which is why he didn't defend himself. He was, he was an elderly man, if I remember the story. Okay. Yeah, and it was personal choice. Like as a teacher, you don't want to be responsible or actually have you don't want to have a gun or operate a uh, handgun, which is fine. You, that's why you know officers on campus. It's their duty to do it, and you can just concentrate on teaching. Yeah. And be the best teacher that you can be to your students yeah. and, and help them get the best. Quality I think of that is much yeah, more. I think a lot of people agree with that statement. That Teachers shouldn't be the ones with the gun. That's good. I've heard that bandied about, and it's I worried should me hire a little. The choice. Ex military, ex police. Okay. Well, also, to you come have in. people like my mother. My mother is well. She's a paraeducator right now. She does reading, but she's getting her teaching degree. She's fully licensed and can, can still carry. And she's gone through the entire process. So why can't she have a license? Well, yeah, if she feels good trained, she's a perfect professional. If it's within her comfort zone, sure. Yeah, but you don't I, need I, every I, teacher I, be armed. Yeah. Just so need why, why, why can't you have someone on the yeah, See, I agree with you on that, but you got to think if the students know the teacher has a gun. Oh, yes. add, well, I mean, if they find out. Oh, just saying it's an true. if question. I mean, if questions are never good. Teachers aren't allowed to have any weapons at all, except for a bad man. Did my mentor have a bad teaching? He was. A teacher, I was, I was in his classroom, I'm going through the education program as well, I was in his classroom and he was telling a story about how he doesn't want a gun, he, he doesn't know how to use a gun well enough, the bat. he doesn't want to do it, he wanted mace, he wanted oh, something that's yeah. a projectile right. so that he can cover, because it's a tiny room, a lot of desks, you can't move. Have you guys heard of the, so the pepper ball gun? The pepper ball guns are a unique projector. invention yeah. in that it's more powerful than pepper spray and it makes a cloud that stays there for minutes at a 
your time. And, and they work. <laughs> and then it's non lethal like that. Yeah, and it's non lethal. A lot of people don't want to handle it. Yeah, but are you going to fire that, fire that in a classroom? I feel like we're going non sequitur here. Having a gun. <laughs> like, if a student gets it, it's not going to kill the person they shoot it at. Same as the taser kind of thing. But it's still safer than a taser. Because if you hold the taser too long, it could seriously injure them. The pepper balls, it's like pepper spray, but it's more powerful. And it stays there. It just blinds them and makes it harder for them to breathe. Well, And this is the weird thing about campuses, take uh, colleges for example. Can you imagine if they said, oh, the First Amendment does not apply here on campus, right? Same thing with the Second Amendment. I don't understand why the Second Amendment doesn't apply to all, all America. Okay, well, we're going on that, like, this is technically a federal campus since we get federal funding, so we have to treat it like a federal building. So if you go into the, um, the like, the National Archives, you can't bring any weapons there because it's a national, it's a, it's a can't government building. on this campus at all. Yeah, at all. I mean, that, but that's that's the basics of how they explain it. It's a technically government property. But yeah. well, what I'm saying, why, so, so look, yeah. listen, they start with the schools, then they start going up to the campuses, then they start taking away from the land. They slowly, they're going to, the Second Amendment is barely even going to exist. They're just, just, they're trying to prime us. Okay, there's no reason why I should not be able to walk on this campus with a concealed weapon. There's no reason why I should not be able to. They're trying to get us to, to look at guns like they're so crazy and they're the only extremists have them. If you have a concealed weapon, you've already gone through all the extended background checks. Yeah. Like, I have a concealed carry, but I'm not carrying it today. I'll pull it off, always. But yeah. also, like, the, the, they talk about, like, gun deaths, but they don't talk about how people die either. Uh, the licensing for Washington, at least, both my parents went through it, they stated that 75% of all gun deaths in Washington alone were suicides. So thinking yeah. that, thinking yeah. that you're going to take away all guns, do you think that's going to stop people from committing suicide? No. Criminals don't pull Sad, Sadly, sadly, there's more than one way. And it's it's very sad that people do it. I don't I want to help them as much as I can, but I think to get rid of guns is not going to help the problem. No. No. Well, well somebody would go in their garage and just build one. Yeah, exactly. yeah you can I build mean, one. 30, 30,000 murder or 30,000 gun deaths per year in the country, and yeah, 20,000 are yeah. suicide. I so watched a YouTube video last week how to make one out of cardboard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. But 10,000, that's another thing. 10,000. You know, murders in the country, um, and only 300 are from actual rifles. So that's what that's what I want you guys to think about. Why are they going after the rifle? Because it's big and scary. <laughs> but why or because it uh, it has a governmental impact. Yes, the people at the top they don't care if we have handguns, even though yeah, they'll go after those too. What they're afraid of is the rifle. Okay, that's what keeps our land safe. More accuracy and higher magazine. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, don't don't you I want you to seriously consider the fact that this this isn't just a conspiracy okay every single country in the history of this world okay the people at the top they go after your right to defend yourself they go after your weapons whether it's a sword right a cannon or a, a semi-automatic rifle okay because that makes us that makes us really strong independent Americans especially as a collective they can't they can't if they focus too hard okay there's gonna be consequences. And it can't, it's going to be hard to have consequences if all we have is handguns or shotguns or whatever it may be. Because the rifle literally is like the safest gun that you can own. A semi-automatic rifle. There is precedent set already too because every country in the, in the world pretty much had it where citizens could own firearms. And slowly they took all that away. Slowly. And so now they want us to fall in line with the rest of the world with this whole one world government thing. So we, we don't have the ability to defend ourselves. And the governments in these countries where they took weapons away have more of an authoritarian control. Uh, like the EU, people in England left Brexit because they were they're saying how big their teapots could be. They had couldn't be any bigger than someone in Romania because theirs were small. Well, Britain, we can't be better than them, so we gotta have ours small. And now they're trying to take their knives over there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. going yeah. back to the to well, knives. pitchforks the too. The, <laughs> That's the insane. New they're trying to take their knives. Yeah, guns there are very restricted. They still have them, but the things he had, those high capacity magazines, are outlawed there. Criminals will always find a way to yeah, get those drugs. It's a box with a drugs, spring in yeah. it. So yeah. Mexico brings in the most 
amount of illegally made. So ghost guns, can't find you can't find them on any database. You shoot someone, throw it away, won't be ever traced back to you. They bring in the most ever. It takes There's supposed to no serial here. numbers either. Yeah, no serial numbers, no barrel records for in any database. Yeah. If you want one, you go to Mexico. You can bring it. You can have someone bring it here to you for the right price, obviously. And the most illegal guns come from criminals who bring them across the border into here. And the large majority of good gun owners know this. And when someone like 1639 comes in and wants to punish them for, I'm transporting my guns to my car to go to the shooting range responsibly, and someone steals my car, I am held legally responsible for some of those for that yes. person stealing my guns and I will go to jail for that yeah. and it's like but he can get those guns somewhere else I didn't do anything wrong I was just bringing my I was stepped inside my house to get my stuff to go to the shooting range I was two minutes and my car's gone so are my guns and you're gonna send me to prison for that yeah there's just so much wrong with I-639 I mean the whole thing is just it, it, all it is <coughs> They don't want you to be able to protect yourself from them. So that's that's, that's why they're trying to do this. Yeah, it's disgusting. I didn't serve my country. I didn't serve my country to help protect everybody here just for them, for me to come home and say, hey, give me your gun. It's not going to happen. Over my cold dead body. That's not going to My grandfather would agree. He served many years in the Army, served in Vietnam, and he will not give away his guns for any uh, any reason other than to the family who would take care of them. Well, it's the reason the Second Amendment was, was written, you know. It was written Revolution. for us to protect ourselves against a tyrannical government. Right. You know what? If, if they had not written the Second Amendment into the Constitution, in 1812, insane. Britain would have reruled America. Yes. Yeah. We would have been back to the British the, the, the fact that citizens were allowed to carry arms and form a militia, they could band, citizens just band together under no authority of the army, band a militia, and they could fight back against the, uh, the British uh, army. And that's what it was designed for, and it worked for that purpose. But the thing is, we have modern technology that couldn't have happened again today. It could. You never say never, no. A guy protecting his home. Shot her. No one really knows. Some type of yeah. Yeah. Probably yeah. wasn't farmer. Yeah. 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 Normal yeah. people, normal people. And if they do apply some type of gun ban, the cops are just going to walk into the middle of Chirac and be like, oh, hey, guys, so uh, I know you don't like us as cops, but we want to take all your guns away. You think the Bloods and the Crips are going to give their guns to the cops? <laughs> Not a chance. No, no criminal. They, and the cop now. Most a lot of people think illegal already. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and there's a ton of law abiding citizens who are doing it. The only guns that are going to get taken away are the legal ones. Right. Yeah, so, like, unless you make a law to say, hey, let's ban illegal guns, which I would be old for. <laughs> oh, there is already laws. Let's ban yeah. illegal yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, just let's have pro-guns that go get those guns instead of taking the guns from the people who have to go through the process right. and go through the background checks and all that stuff to get them legal. That's yeah. the big thing, too. A lot of people think police and military are going to come take your guns. The majority of police and military support the Second Amendment, and they will not give their guns back. They have a right and laws protecting them to deny those orders. They don't have to do that. So, they can... Just join our side. They don't have to do anything that they don't want to. That's very true. They took an oath to the Constitution, not to the oath of the commanding officers. That's, That's why it's important to get ordinances in place too, so that you know there it, it helps them too. Because like you said, they don't want to take the guns, but at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, you know they need support from the people too. The people have to get those ordinances in place, saying that our police are not going to break the Constitution. It's so important because because the police, you know, a lot of them, you know, we have a Clark County Sheriff. Sheriff Atkins, he said he's going to enforce 1639 to its fullest, okay? Which means not every single cop out there honors the Constitution. A lot of them do. I mean, I got a blue line flag right here. A lot of them do, okay? But there are some who are politicians, and they will do whatever they're told. I, I know because I, I can hear them when they speak. They have the same talking points that I hear from communists. It's the same thing over, everywhere I go. So I think it's just it's very important that you, if you guys, like you, I, I learned the power of contacting your politicians in your area. Contacting, I put up the sheriff's phone number. Our dis, uh, prosecuting attorney, okay, he's he's charging one of our guys who was attacked by Antifa. They attacked his truck, and all they do is speed off. And now he's charging him. He's facing four years. He was pressured but, into it. He was pressured into it. Someone's controlling him, but he didn't press charges on anybody else. So it's we had he probably got over a thousand people um, contacting him. And so he's feeling the pressure, and it's really important that you guys do that at a local level. You guys should talk. You should go into your city council here in Ellensburg and talk about the sanctuary ordinance. Ask them, do they respect the Constitution? Will they enforce the Constitution here in Ellensburg 
or Kittitas County, okay, when it comes down to it. Because someone someone in, in Olympia area is going to send down orders to your Ellensburg police and say, you have to go to this person's house and take his guns with no due process, no warrant, no questions asked. That's not acceptable. Yeah, today's uh, guns, what's it going to be tomorrow after they get this? Yeah, yeah, I think I heard, if I heard correctly, Kittitas County Sheriff will not enforce I-1639 here. I think I heard that. Yeah. And I've, I've seen video of him talking about it. And like, good for you. It's honestly, it's ridiculous that it passed. I mean, yeah, Seattle's the major voting part of Washington. And they're mainly liberal. So, of course, those things are going to get passed. But when you have sheriffs like this, I think it's eight or nine counties in Washington are enforcing it. When you get Four those, nine. really? Nine, yeah. like, oh, oh, okay. But, um, but yeah, once you get those people saying, yeah, we're not going to follow it because it doesn't uphold the Constitution, that starts a push back against other people. And it's like, oh shit, um, we kind of screwed up here. Maybe we should think about it some more. Or it's like, they're just going to like strike it all together. But she says they're sheriffs, you know. That has a lot, that impacts people a lot. That's a big deal. And this is much larger than the second they're, they're using the, they're circumventing the fourth amendment, which no one's until we come along. No one's going after them for going after a fourth amendment, which is due process. You know, like, uh, for example, they ramrod this through and they use the fourth amendment to attack all the other amendments. What's to say they're not going after something else tomorrow? For example, uh, liberals have been behind the fourth amendment for decades now on the abortion issue. Now, I'm pro life, but I don't think the government has any business telling you what you can and cannot do with your body. Yeah, this is a, this is a, uh, when the life becomes a life, and you start talking when it's murder or not. That's a whole different issue. But they're gonna, if they got that through, next thing you know, say somebody gets in the in the power and says, "Well, we don't like people with long hair. We're in, we're in a We don't like people who have piercings or tattoos. You have to dress a certain. We have to do this. Or they've taken away your right to your own person, your own property, and kick in your door without due process, without a warrant. You no longer have a right as a human being. Now you're property." Mm -hmm. You want to be property. You're, you essentially become a slave in the state. And this is what we're here fighting against. It's more than just constitutional rights. It's cultural also. Because our culture needs to re-embrace the Constitution. And every every amendment in that Constitution is there to protect us from the government. Keep us as individuals and not as a collective. We come together as a collective under certain ideals wrapped around the Constitution and the rule of law. And then we achieve our goals and we go back and live our lives. As, in, as individuals, we're, we're not the slaves to our neighbor, we're not slaves to the state, we're not slaves to our employer, we have the choice to do whatever job we want to do. We live in a socialist state, we no longer have a choice of a career. You have 20 school teachers and uh, you have 25 applying, so now the other five teachers have to go do whatever you tell them to go do, they don't get to live their passion, which is teach children, for an example, I'm sorry. The, the state tells you what you can and cannot do. We met uh, in Berkeley, we met that girl from China. She had a mandatory job from the state. Her job was herding ducks to the pond. And that's not what she wanted to do, but that was her job. She was forced to do it. If she didn't do her job, she could have jailed. Do you want to live in a life in a world like that? I don't. The, Constitution. So the Fourth Amendment is very, very important. Very important. Very important. It's one of the main reasons the founding fathers put together the Constitution and the Bill of Rights the way they did. Because they lived it. They, they, yeah, they lived through all that crap. They're like, we don't want our future. put it down in a document that has been around for hundreds of years now and a lot of it has changed but that's how it has to be like a lot of like um saw a video this girl straight out called the constitution racist the constitution itself is not racist the ideals of the people who wrote it may have been racially biased but that's why we have an amendment process and things are allowed to change in our constitution to fix those problems that arise with new generations and new ideals. Like, if that wasn't in there, slavery would still be a thing. The, the South Confederacy probably would have overall taken everything. And we, slavery, all things. Women would still have no rights. Women were essentially property back then. Too. Yes, this suffrage movement has been them there. Yeah, which is a good thing. It's, it's one of those things. Like the Second Amendment allowed us to. The Second Amendment allowed us to break away from England and make our own state, our own nation, to have our own 
rules and to correct those rules. Like a lot of the laws in England that are thousands of years old and they're still enforced. Yeah, they're all even how ridiculous they are. They're all driven from the Magna Carta. But yeah, that's why the Second Amendment and the First Amendment are so important. The Fourth Amendment most is right there with them because that protects what happens to each of us as individuals. Because when one person goes to jail, it's not the collective, it's that individual who is getting processed and punished or not because of due process. And if that's got taken away, we're screwed all in all. Yeah. Without the Fourth Amendment, you're a slave. Did you want to talk about Portland? What have you been going through? So, Speak up, Haley. Yeah. I'm nervous, guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love listening to you guys, though. You guys are doing great. So I live in Portland, Oregon, and I deal with mass thugs on an everyday basis. They come to my house. They're outspoken. They come to my house. Uh, they put flowers all over my property, trying to get me, you know, kicked out of my house and the place where I live. And then when I go into downtown, they will stalk me. They will follow me. I have my own personal paparazzi every time I go into Portland, <laughs> which is crazy. No, every single favorite. time. Every time I go in. Not friendly. Not friendly. Yeah. Though. Oh. It's weird when you see. It's weird when you see a picture of someone taking a picture of you, like through a window, like sitting at a, at yeah. a cafe or something. It's crazy. Yeah, no, and I think this is why it's important to have our rights, especially our Second Amendment, because when you have a mob of them, and just a couple of months ago, me and a couple of my friends uh, were jumped by 30, 30 mass thugs or late night. Because and you were trying to go to a socialist my meeting. Friend, they broke his ribs here, and my other friend was in the hospital. They cracked his head. So it was absolutely insane. But you know, one of our friends who had his concealed carry on him had his gun, and he brought it out and they all left. I mean, like at the end. So I mean, that's what we need. That we need to have our Second Amendment because if we don't, like things like that, that can happen to you. You know, they're gonna put you in a dangerous situation where you're gonna get killed one day. And that's like and your your gun is the only thing that could be, the be able to protect you. And the police won't protect you. Yeah, Portland. police won't. Oh yeah, we call the police. They take forever to get to the slow roll. Like that. Then you know they were parked three blocks away. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> no... <laughs> I saw them walking up here. Well, have you guys seen the video when they're attacking the, they're blocking traffic and they started attacking the car with a bat and stuff for no reason, just because he was trying to drive through there. And then the, the camera goes over here. And there's motorcycle cops yeah, sitting yeah, there. Yeah, just sitting there watching. And this is the thing you guys have to understand is that in these big cities like Portland, Seattle, Berkeley, um, San Francisco, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make it so it's hard for the police officers to enforce the law. They did a study on that because the police are afraid in Portland to do anything. They'd rather come up slowly than have to act because they don't want to um, get disciplined or, or get sued and all that stuff. But and they're also at the same time they're trying to they're trying to disarm the police in Portland, okay? And they're trying to disarm the citizens to where it, they're making it so hard just to just carry a gun. Mike Strickland is a guy who he had a mob come to him. He pulled out his gun, right? It was probably about 20 or 30 of them that wanted to hurt him. He just pulled out his gun. Then they, they left, and then he was able to get out of there, okay? Now, he got, they, um, I don't know how much time he served for that, but he, he served he, uh, 90 days. Yeah, 90 days for that, and he's still on probation. And so, yeah, yeah, that's the crazy thing, is they're trying to build this thing where Antifa in Portland is protected. They don't ever go to jail for yep. anything. And they, they may book them, but then they'll drop the charges right after. They're protected, but we're demonized because we believe in freedom. We follow the law. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the mayor in Portland has, a, and Haley has been doing a great job yeah. against the mayor of Portland. Uh, he's had has an agenda where he's fighting the Trump administration by using these kids in the street to, to I mean, strong nice. arm the citizens and anyone who is a dissenter. And it's yeah. If, and if right you dissent, now, he'll stick them up. Who's running Portland is not even the mayor. It's these it's these thugs. You know the direct uh, the dark, kids. yeah directing your traffic, telling where you can and cannot go. I mean I have tons of videos out there where I'm just driving through and they they're literally stopping your car, throwing stuff at you, and they don't get in trouble. They you know they're not being told to stop. We have video evidence. Video. This is how bad it is in Portland. We have video evidence of an old man getting attacked and getting robbed yeah. by four or five of the uh, Antifa thugs. Video evidence on camera, and they did. Oh yeah. 
Bullshit. Haley went and got it legally. She had a bike for it, and we're really proud of her for doing it. She went and fought and got a, a petition approved to recall the mayor, uh, and she got assaulted for it. Uh, and no, because nothing happened. Nothing happened. after nobody. And you still haven't activated that yet, have you? But no, I have 90. I uh, no, not. When I activated, yeah, 90 days, so. That's what's wrong now, we used to respect women and we attack people who attack women. Right or wrong, if you hit a woman, you get beaten the shit out of yeah, That was wrong. Well, well, right now in Portland, they're like to change this whole thing, the LGBT community is getting attacked and hit. I'm sorry if you're gay. You know who's really getting attacked right now? It is conservatives. My friend who is trans, she's somewhere around here. She was attacked and they laughed at her and they threw her on the ground. And they make fun of it on Twitter all the time. She's she's trans. She used to be a communist. But no one likes yeah, to talk yeah, about she, it. She was in she converted. She met agenda. us. She met us and realized that we're nothing like we say we are. And that she's she's one of our strongest people. Yeah, and she could be why? Because she was willing to talk to you guys. Yeah. A lot of these people here, while I respect the hell of them, you can have your opinion, talk to us, and we might change your mind like you guys did. She's brilliant. She's like a great idea. Great writer. There she is. The guy said that you're silly. Listen. Talking about you. I think he ran out. It's all good things this time. Tell them. Tell them about Antifa. Tell these fan folks about Portland. Tell them about Portland. So this is Alyssa. She is a veteran. She's transgender. Stuff up there. Okay, so, Antifa. <laughs> so, in other parts of the country, I'm sure everybody's seen them in the news here and there. The black bloc masks, whatever, those whole deal. The anarcho communist nonsense. Anyways, so here's the deal. They are some, I switch sides after, uh, I was told that these people right here were fascists, were all those other dirty words, white supremacists. Nazis, all that stuff. None of it's true. I actually sat down and I actually, at a protest against them, I actually sat down and talked and I was like, whoa. That's the way they run. Okay, I might have been wrong about this here. And um, I have seen Antifa do some pretty fucked up things. Uh, I've seen them intimidate, harass, dox, assault, and in some cases even sexually assault people in Portland and get away with it. And that's, that's wrong. You know? No. They that's right how Portland is. Over. And that's how they treat the far left in Portland. Is that right? they let them get away with whatever they want because they have some sort of moral high ground. And that's yeah. that's not right. <laughs> not only that, but the really? Antifa in Portland want to take away people on the rights right to bear arms. And that is wrong. Because how else are you able to defend yourself from that point on? Against a violent terror, domestic terrorist organization that has no remorse about beating innocents in the street. About to call us what exactly. They even hit a child. They hit one of our, 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 our another activist. Yeah. He had a, his kid who's like what, seven years old. That young lady, that they they even attacked put their child. bodies. Wow. So we weren't the outrage. You never hear okay. anything about that. Most of them are really drugged out kids that are confused and didn't like to. They hear things but they don't have chance. They are domestic terrorists. They are. I I switched sides after I sat down and actually thought about it. I was like, wow, this is wrong. You know what? This this isn't right. Really? Going around and chasing people and throwing Damn, rocks at them and calling them Nazis without knowing anything about them is mouth. wrong. <laughs> and threatening Shut your mouth, dude. Shut your mouth. Oh, oh Steve, it's also like that. true. Steve, all they want from you is oh, make you mad. Oh, dude. It's Steve, just ignore him. Anti-fascism. It's in itself. I'm sure, I, I'm sure you know what, there can be, you, you can take some good away from that. I'm sure, whatever. Trying to stand up for what you believe in, that's fine. But once you draw that line, cross that line into committing acts of violence and having no remorse about that is wrong. And no, yeah. And that's, yeah. I've seen the far left get away with some pretty messed up things. I've seen them actually commit some pretty messed up things. And I've seen them laugh about committing these horrible things. Heard, that's wrong. I've seen him celebrate people's murder. Yeah. Yeah. One of our guys, yeah, he, uh, one of our cameramen, he, he died in a, a truck accident on 84. He actually burnt alive in the truck. And the Antifa was spreading that around laughing and, and celebrating his Making death. Making crispy, crispy critter yeah. memes and everything. Yeah. Yeah. And is this right? I mean, really? <laughs> you know? It, it, is this right to just sit there and be like, you know what? Let's just keep letting this happen. No. It's up to every single person here to make sure that this doesn't come to your cities. 
Yeah. What happened to you? Yeah. Or your family? I was sexually assaulted by a woman. She was. By anti fascists. Just walk away, guy. Come on. In Portland. It's not worth it. Me you're both wrong. You're both wrong. Yeah. You're both wrong. Yeah. You're both wrong. 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 You're both yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's, that's about that's as low as it gets, mouth. Threaten me again. I didn't threaten you. No, I asked no, you if you had the balls to step out. I see you have the balls to run your mouth. You I see, this is what I'm talking about right here. They have no remorse about blah, saying blah, such blah, horrible blah. things about innocent people. Let's go. You know, that, call a child that that doesn't really call call a child molester. Free speech? Is that why you guys are fighting? Free speech? I can have free speech, but I can't say the N-word. Technically, right? technically, free speech, hey. right? That's what you're fighting. It's slander. It's slander. It's, 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 it's what? slander. What? It's slander. Don't engage. Look at them. Look at the gorilla. <laughs> What do you mean? This is what they want. We have the reach to the Second Amendment argument should start running your mouth. There are many things about stupid shit you don't know about. It's because you don't. That's why you're an idiot. It is. Clearly. But that's pretty damn insulting, sir. You try to oppress. What's your Amendment rights? Civil discourse. Civil discourse then doesn't start, mean you call somebody some stupid civilly. shit like that. Then start acting civilly. Where I'm from, Mutt, you don't call a man that unless you can back it up with paperwork. Okay, I okay. Or ball. Should I just back it up? That's off campus. I can just back it up with yelling and threats. That makes you. I'm calling you out. That makes you a man. It makes you a man to call somebody less than scum. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being called a racist. And a child molester for my beliefs. You're an idiot. Guys, I don't need you don't have any beliefs. This is a Second Amendment Please. rally. Step out of the way. Hey, okay. what's going on? This was really got a big mouth. Okay. That's what's going on. I, I understand that he has a big mouth. I just want to know what's going on. This was really peaceful, and all of a sudden, he got disrupted. So what's I, I asked him a question that is instantly escalated. Okay. What bullshit. So can can we step out? Now? Yeah, I can hear the question real quick. Steve child molester. He doesn't like child molesters at all. That's why he's so angry. Right now. It's a big, it's a big issue in Portland. The, 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 the trafficking, the human trafficking, and pedophilia. Is a big so he's very passionate about that. As you can see. Jail today, I'd have cleaned his ass right there. Boom! Okay. I, I know you put up with a bunch of shit yourself. in 
enemy because you voted for Trump. You're not an enemy because you voted for Hillary. You're not an enemy because you're Republican or Democrat, okay? Well, the enemy is the people <laughs> at the top taking advantage of us, and we have to understand that. That's why I'm not big on the whole left versus right thing. I don't consider myself a Republican. I don't consider myself a Democrat. I consider myself an American and a freedom fighter. Amen. Yeah. Okay? That's the most Amen. important thing. And and people people are laughing. Like, like people at the top who see this, right? Like, they put the earphones in. They're like, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen, don't listen. What is it that they're so afraid of? Has this been bad? Is this bad? Or did we say, yeah, I don't know what it is. What is it that they're going to hear that's going to upset them so bad? All I've done is preach love from the very beginning. That's all I've done, okay? And I, and, and we, we have a $2,000 bounty out, okay? So you guys know this? If anybody can find any evidence of hate speech on my part, they get two grand. So you better start looking. Uh, how long has that been Three out? years of running. Since I started, yeah. Three years. Three whole years they found nothing. Three years no hate speech on my part. <laughs> that, that's and it drives crazy. them crazy. And yet we're the hate group. So tonight, 8 o'clock, in front of the TAV. Um, and then, like I said, tomorrow, there's that unity rally. I, I, I highly recommend goes. And then 4 o'clock, or 5.30, we'll be out in front in Memorial Park. Um, down there, okay? So, does anybody have any questions? I just want to add a little bit. Sure. Right? Yeah, our march is all inclusive. We don't care what your political persuasion That's is, right. or, or your gender, or your your sexual preference. We don't care. Man. All we care about is that you enjoy other people and you want to interact with other people. You know, the, we're, we're all Americans. We celebrate each other every day, and we should unite against the government that's trying to encroach on our rights. So we can do it together. We don't care right, left, none of that. Just have fun. We want to have fun. Don't be, <laughs> don't be miserable. Don't be miserable. Like happy. just like that. That would be miserable. Like that's yeah. total miserable over there. <laughs> I would be on really both, bored. Both, on both sides. On both sides. Not just one guy. One just one guy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Takes two to They're tango. Two to tango. Who did? Yeah. Wait, wait, I saw that guy. Yeah. Which guy? He, 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 he's that one. Does he have a mask? Yeah. 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 Leather jacket. Yeah. Do not allow <laughs> masks on your campus, guys. Yeah. That's bullshit. That's when it starts. Speak out. Show your face. But we start allowing the last. It's a slippery slope. Tell them it's not. We're not. It's not acceptable. I am. Because they're doing. He admitted he said it. He called me a child monster, and he admitted he said it. I want to file a criminal report. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. First place. You can't talk shit like that. I want him. He admitted it. Come on. Let's go. Do your job. Let's go. I want him arrested. He admitted he said it. What do you do? He admitted he said it. He admitted he said it to these cops. It's not arrestable. Is it? A hate crime. That you can't call somebody a child monster. That has no criminal record, Russell. That's as low as it gets. I know. I know. Okay. And he admitted he said it. Tell you what. If I wasn't with you, I'd just go ahead and go to jail today. Okay? I'm, I'm telling you. I'm glad that we're not going to go to jail. If I wasn't with you, I'd go to jail today. And it, that's you're, as ugly as it gets. Yeah, conversation broke down and stuff got said. It should not have been said. All you have to do is... But, but we don't need to get violent. All you have to do is call this. All right, anyway, we're going to go. Now we're going to God, I would like to thank you for this right to be here at Central Washington University. God, thank you for bringing these awesome students here today to, to listen to us. God, and we really appreciate the, the peace that we had today. Um, and we really hope that some people can leave today as a different type of person. God, thank you for everything that you've done. And I ask that you help guide everybody here one step at a time through your, your son. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for coming out. Yeah. No, thank, thank you. Guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Us. Or tonight. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll tonight if y'all can make it out. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Thank you, sir. It was yeah, nice thank you. meeting you, dude. Yeah, you too. <laughs> Fuck you, Russell. That was fucked up, man. I'm sorry. No, no not you. Not you. You're not. <laughs> nothing you, nothing you did was. So was Russell. I don't have any <laughs> 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 <laughs>
I got some shorts. I don't think that's quite a replacement for the flags. <laughs> I don't think We've so. We've probably either. got a couple extra in there. Yeah, I'm gonna bring my blue line out. Okay, cool. I get a pull for it. Where? Like right here. All black. Yeah, the leather jacket right there. Oh. Yeah. Fucking Mr. Antifa, badass. <laughs> hey, at least he doesn't have his face covered. I mean, he's not that much of a He's not to that point yet. Again, there's a tipping point. Oh, because he's alone. Because he's alone. Oh, dude, there's a pack of them? Believe me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I don't know yet. Oh. Yes, she is. She's going to hang out. Show up. Get some nice photos on the Oh, shit. You're right. All right. All right. We'll see you guys tonight. All right. Hey, y'all want to stand in front of these hearts for a picture? Sure. <laughs> you too, buddy. All right. Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> you guys mind if I get a picture of you? Uh, yeah, go ahead. If I get a picture of y'all? Yeah. Second Amendment Sanctuary Ordinance. Sorry. Oh, after you. Joey. Cheese. Cheese. Thank you very much. I learned. <laughs> I learned. I wanted to record him, but he's getting all quiet. Hey, okay. Top. <laughs> I understand. You did good restraint not hitting him. Yelling at him is fine. It was really good content. Because, right? because, because you made him look like the asshole. Yes, but you didn't hit him. Well, I got the full video. Everybody there was totally like, that dude, that was screwed up. You're saying, you know, everybody did. What? Even people from the outside that came in and heard it. They were like, what's up? I thought was saying that that's what he was looking for. Yeah, he was. Oh, that was all I had. I was gonna fucking dash right over, just beat his fucking face. In. You know if a bigger crowd would have heard me? Or heard I wanna go back there. But...